So let's talk about the, the uh, venous sinuses. So the venous sinuses kind of don't make sense at first. They're the blo return blood for your brain. So the brain puts its blood back into a system, but the problem is, is that where it puts the blood is not actually a vein. It doesn't have a tunica media and a tunica intern, all that stuff, so you really can't call them veins. So we just call them the dural venous sinuses. We talked about how the blood gets there, so let's talk about how the blood gets back out. Now what happens, we call them the dural venous sinuses, and if, if we were to draw something like the top of the skull, and the skull layers are made out of the, the dura that goes with it, right? Now that dura is made of two parts. The one that follows the skull, and then there's another portion of dura that comes to the center but has to follow the brain when the brain has its half. So this turn goes all the way down and then turns around and follows the other hemisphere of the brain back up and then lays back down the other layer of dura. Well, that makes this potential space where there is no dura touching dura and where it turned around another potential space. This same thing happens where the cerebellum is. If you took where the tentorium cerebelli is, that is this way, so if you just look at it sideways, where the tentorium touches the side, another potential space. And the thing is, if you link them all up, they drain to the jugular foramen, and then your jugular vein's hanging out there waiting for them. So on the skull, you have this, the superior sagittal sinus, and that superior sagittal sinus runs from the cribriform plate all the way around the corner to the back of the skull called the confluence of sinuses. Okay, so um, this sinus, the inferior uh, sagittal sinus, is where the falx cerebri turns around. And that falx means that right here, there's another one that goes around the bottom of the falx cerebri. But then you have, I'm gonna try to draw this 3D, then you have coming out sideways in the tentorium cerebellum, this one coming out at you and the other one going the other way, okay? So what happens when a plane runs into a plane? You get a straight line. So when two planes run into each other, that's always a straight line. That's where the straight sinus comes from, where the tentorium cerebelli runs into uh, the falx cerebri. You get that line. Now, in the front here, you end up draining to the, uh, the top side of the skull, and that's going to have to go through another S-shaped sinus to get down to the base of the skull, and we call that the sigmoid sinus. Okay, now, dribbling over this, the, there's also a big cavernous sinus underneath uh, that area of the, the bulk of the tem temporal, uh, temporal um, sorry, frontal portion of your brain. And the cavernous sinus drains two ways, through the superior petrosal sinus and through the inferior petrosal sinus, and I'll show you that on the skull. So the way I want you to think about this is like a trace problem. If you have blood in that goes out of the brain through those little connecting veins or those bridging veins, if they get out and go into the inferior sagittal sinus, it's going to have to go from the inferior sagittal sinus down to the straight sinus, from the straight sinus to the, the uh, confluence of sinuses, from the confluence of sinuses through the transverse sinus, through the SH sigmoid sinus, out through the jugular foramen and into your jugular vein, because they flow that way. The great vein of Galen is hanging off the front of the straight sinus, so that's where most of that blood comes from. from from your brain going out through the great vein of Galen. Now let's say that you go and lay down. When you lay down, this is a gravity-fed system. These are not veins, there are no valves, okay? So it comes out of the great vein of Galen and it's gonna end up draining through the transverse sinus, through that sigmoid sinus, but then going through the superior petrosal sinus into the cavernous sinuses that drain out the front of your face through those facial sinuses, right? And so that's where all of the blood comes from. So when you lay down getting a massage, all of your brain is draining through your face and that's why you get all the swelling and you can't breathe anymore because all of the extra blood that comes through this, this cavernous, sorry, through this uh, uh, sinus uh, system to get to your face and drains out your facial vein instead of just out through your jugular. Does that make sense? When you're standing up, that swelling goes away because now you're draining out through your jugular. And even your face is now draining backwards through your jugular vein. And that means that any infection on your face can get back into the cavernous sinus, right? And we call that a cavernous sinus thrombosis, and that's deadly, which is why they call this area the triangle of death, 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 right? So let's show it here. So on the inside of the skull, you can see here's your confluence of sinuses. 
right? That superior petrosal sinus, or superior sagittal sinus came all the way down around here. Then you can see the groove in the bone where the tentorium cerebelli would attach, mm -hmm. but that's where the transverse sinus is. And if you look at it from this way, you can see here is your S-shaped sagittal sinus, or, sorry, know. sigmoid sinus, right? Mm -hmm. Sigmoid sinus goes around that corner and right out through the hole, through the jugular foramen. And the jugular vein starts on the other side. So here is where the cavernous sinus would be. You have another one here called the basilar sinus. Basilar sinus drains right through that line, right out to the jugular, through the jugular uh, foramen. This one on the edge, you can see this little groove right here where the uh, cavernous sinus would drain over the edge of the petrosal sinus right over the petrous portion of the temporal bone mm -hmm. and B, the superior petrosal sinus. The one that goes around this corner and goes over this edge would be the inferior petrosal sinus. Does that end up draining into the basilar sinus too? Basilar, the basilar sinus, I think it's independent. I think okay. that it's the superior, the superior drains, I think directly out, okay. but in the basilar also drains directly out. They might, could be connected. You have to look that up because I don't know. Okay. Um, Anyway, so I hope this makes more sense so that you can drain from the back all the way through here around over the top edge into your, cav your um, cavernous sinus and then out through the maxilla into your face, okay, or vice versa. But I hope this makes more sense of where these sinuses are and why we call them sinuses instead of veins. Yep. That's it. Thank you very much.